We've also got our network view, which is which is a JavaScript, which is attached to our players. Now there's also the built-in network view, which I said about earlier, but this is a different script, which we create. So on awake, if the network view isn't mine, if we find a network view and it's not ours, we do not see their camera. Our mouse doesn't affect their rotation and our player, the, the player move script attached to them isn't affected by our buttons. So if we press something, it's not going to move somebody else. That's effectively what this does. So depending on how many other things you have that you do, based on button presses and, ma and mouse movements and things like that, you need to turn them all off inside here if, say, a player's got a different function that isn't any of these, but these are kind of the basic ones. So yeah, if we move on to our player movement scripts. We've got the basic movement stuff, except instead of it being when we press W, it transform translates us forward, we actually have network view dot rpc and then inside that we have we call the forward function but we call it different and we call it in two inverted commas instead of doing kind of with open bracket close bracket semicolon and then comma rpc mode dot all buffered now what this does is it tells every other network view in the game that we have pressed that button and every other network view is going to see what we've done inside this RPC. So everybody that's got this script is going to see that we have done this and it's going to tell everybody you have to put at RPC before the function like that and then the function is function forward open bracket just like a normal function effectively but with the RPC stuff what it does is it tells everyone so it tells all and that you can just do all but if you do all buffered the buffered um, if somebody joins the game after this function has been called, the server holds that information and tells the new people. So rather than somebody joining and there being people in the wrong place, they'll join. And So say if someone's swinging a weapon and somebody joins mid-swing, they'll still see that weapon carry on swinging because the server will tell them it's this far on through the through the animation or through the movement or through whatever whatever you call inside here so that's for all of them now if we were doing a proper a real setup like they do in actual games you need to do it it's a bit more confusing and a bit different but I, I didn't really want to put it in this video but what you do is instead you have it as server um, like that and you ha you call the RPC on the server and that means that the server then has to call it back to all the clients so everybody is told from the server so everything is, is controlled from the server so that is the, it's the way say if you play like battlefield or whatever there are you join a server rather than create a game you join a game and that's because the servers are massive computers that can handle lots of information at once rather than risking somebody's computer being worse than somebody else's so the movements are going to be wrong depending on what player. But if you're just making small games for a couple of players, it's going to be okay to have it like this. But to be honest, you need to get it into the idea of using servers instead of using authoritative servers. So I think that kind of covers everything. Obviously, you just kind of copy paste it for all of them. And hopefully that's been too, that's been that's not been too kind of confusing. And hopefully you guys can understand it. One other thing, actually, when you build I think I, I, I went over this in the last tutorial, but when you build stuff, you need to make sure you have both of your, your um, scenes in there. And a couple of things with building, actually, if you go player settings, you want to set some of these. So I've set it to a smaller just because and set to run in background. I've also turned this to just 60 by 10 and 60 by 9 because I don't want people to be able to play it on too small a resolution. Um, because it will mess up some of the GUI stuff that I've got. But that, that obviously depends on what game you've got and how you've got it set up. Most screens are going to be able to handle that, that those resolutions anyway. So yeah, I think I think that's about it. Obviously we've got we've got an object that's got our networking script on that's called Network Master, but it's just uh, an empty game object. And then that's also a prefab. The camera is just there simply because of that bug with the GUI. And I think that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and respond to them. I am going to be trying to put out a, a proper networking with the authoritative servers in the future, but I'm not too sure about it all. I, I don't I'm not 100 percent on knowing all of it. I don't I don't want to give you guys false information and then have to kind of take down the video and put up a new one. So I want to tell you stuff that I know for sure. 
which is this this is as far as I know for sure will work and you'll be able to play with some friends and put, put you can you can then add the rest of your game one bit one thing as well any animations you have for your characters you have to put inside the RPCs otherwise nobody else is going to be able to see them and you also if you've got enemies that are moving with AI and whatever they also need to have the same as your player setup so they also need the network view brought in from components and miscellaneous and and the other scripts as well so then they can they, they don't need the the network view the one that we created but they need the one that's built in so they can kind of see our movements and be be, be hit by us or, or see where where our position is so i hope that's that that answers many questions about networking if you have any more then do ask them and i hope to see you guys in my next video